Hey, good day. Welcome to another episode of Rob Report. I'm your host, Robert Bob TV Brown. How you doing today? I took a little rest. I was kind of almost trying to do this 25 hour thing. I said I was going to try to stay up 25 hours straight and I just couldn't do it. My body was just doing it. Um, but you know, I'm on this 25 for 25 um, to get $25 from 25 people um, in this 25 hour drive that I have. And I do want to thank um, a gentleman who gave yesterday. Let me look up his information and let me make sure everything is right on my sound. Give me a moment. So you guys get to spin, uh, see how I do when I just do it straight like this. And before I do the editing and chopping and all that kind of stuff. So let's go to um, the tail of the tape. I want to thank um, Alexandra Zarkarchenko who gave $25 into this effort. So we got Alexander Zarkarch, um, excuse me, Zarkarchenko, uh, Patrick Stanton, and um, of course we have Angeline uh, who donated to the efforts of Bob TV. I'm looking at Jordan Sheridan and I'm seeing that um, he's just building up this status quo thing. Uh, I'm going to have a two-tier um, team that I'm going to develop to help us move forward together with exposing the truth, exposing pop punk politicians on the daily, and um, really open people's eyes to what's really going on in their communities, uh, in their neighborhoods, and in their politics. So here we got... Um, we're going to have a um, basic members, uh, you know, on the um, YouTube channel is $5. On the Patreon is $5. Um, but the crew that I'm assembling uh, is a remnant of people um, donating $25 a month um, toward the efforts of Bob TV. Um, but that phase is not going to take place till about six months from now. Right now, we're just trying to find 25 people. Who, could, who who has the ability. And when I say has the ability, I really mean there's somebody who, you know, they got $25 just laying around in their account. And oftentimes, you would never go below your checking account. <laughs> um, $25 is nothing to you. And $25 is a lot to most people. And, um, even for people who do have it. So I don't want you to think I take this lightly because I do not. Uh, and me, I'm usually the type of person try to do everything I'm on, my, on my own. But I was told that whenever you're doing a de an endeavor that um, you believe can make a small mark on this world that cannot be erased, um, you have to include people on that. Um, no minister uh, who's planning on spreading his message throughout the world is going to try to do it himself. He's always going to have partners to do it with. Uh, even when it comes to business ventures, you want to do business ventures with partners more so try to do it yourself, especially when you plan on developing this thing to be bigger than what you think it's going to be. Um, here we are. Um, I think the Rob Report, um, I mean the Bob, um, Bob TV I actually started about eight years ago. It started off with me, um, you know, people started getting, Bernie Sanders um, supporters started getting low in momentum and I just kind of came on a camera and tried to do a prep talk. And, um, and encourage and motivate because that's what I do. I, I, I'm an encourager. I am a motivator. So um, that's how the channel started. <laughs> and um, and I got some good reviews. And I got some subscribers. It wasn't fast. 
Uh, I think I started off like everybody else, but the most I had for at least three, maybe three to six months was a hundred, and I was excited about that. And then when we finally broke to a thousand, I was super excited about that because uh, I'm a regular guy, and uh, like most people, and I, I want the most for myself, but I also want the most for everybody else. Also, I'm not a tribalist. I'm not a staunch idealist where as my ideas uh, that will conquer the world for fully on yours I'm not like that and then all of a sudden as we begin to build a channel I said I'm going to get a little more serious with this channel I do got a lot to say uh, especially from a street point of view and you know and um, I already had a channel where I was teaching people how to love one another so I figured I'd just go ahead and start this network so it started off as burning a bus TV the whole point was um, to encourage um, Bernie or Busters um, throughout this political process in 2016. Um, the brother, this young brother came out with this song called Bernie or Bust uh, and I decided to use that as my theme song and then I decided to call my channel, the, the show Bernie or Bust, the channel Bernie or Bust TV. Bernie or Bust TV. And um, that's how we started. And uh, we made it short, short for Bob TV. And after Bernie lost the election, I said, I got the um, channel, what I'm going to do with this channel. So then I realized my name's Robert, <laughs> which is short for Bob. And that's how we got Bob TV. Okay. Instead of Bernie or Bus TV. Now, here's the deal. In this election... This is important to really send strong messages out to political parties, Democrats and Republicans. You got to understand that Bernie or Bust movement was so freaking strong that it scared the crap out of the Democratic establishment. And they didn't take the Bernie or Bust movement seriously. If you go back and watch my dumb DNC mistakes, um, you will see the mistakes that Bernie, um, these politicians, the Democratic Party made that they can't make this year. Dumb DNC mistakes. Mistakes that they made in the Democratic Party, in the Democratic National Committee. The mistakes they made, they got Trump, and the make mistake, same mistake is going to cause them to get Trump again if they don't follow that mistake and one of the mistakes was un 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 underestimating the Bernie or Bust movement. And then I got Joe Biden say well, if they really believe in Bernie's values, they will vote for Hillary Clinton. It ain't got nothing to do with party. Cause a true Bernie or Buster at that time, um, you know, Buster sound like something from uh, from from California <laughs> uh, down there, uh, Crenshaw and Compton. Um, Bernie or Busters had nothing to do with party elites. They could care less about Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. Their job was to get Bernie or Sanders elected as president. And the Bernie or Bus movement really meant Bernie or Bus. Either you're going to choose him or we're out of here. We're gone. So um, that's what happened. You, the regular election, and you thought the Bernie or Bus people were actually going to follow you after you rigged the election. I just talked to a good friend of mine that's on um, Facebook and she said, uh, you know, you know, this is going to get Trump again. And, and, uh, and I was telling her, exactly. It's going to get Trump again. Why? Because you are not doing what you can to make sure the person who can defeat Trump, you motivate and push that person down the road to success. Not the person who you believe in your mind, but statistically, through the polling, through the data, and I'm not a polling a data guy, but just by the um, the ground work on, just based on the work on the ground, there's certain key factors that tell that's telling you this person will beat Trump, and this person will not. That's why I did the video. Any blue will not do. That mentality is what you actually call slut voting you can't just put any person in office and think they're going to defeat that man 
That man has just broken the record for turnout in Iowa and New Hampshire. And if you don't get it together and Miriam match this guy when it comes to turnout, he will win. He who turns out the most people to the polls will win. It don't have nothing to do with their policies all the time. It doesn't have nothing to do with how evil of a character they are. If he who gets the pe people to the voting booth the most will win the election. That's one key. Turnout. Donald Trump beat Barack Obama in turnout in Iowa and uh, um, New Hampshire. And Barack Obama was a get out the vote machine. He broke the records. And his support base is 100% solid for it. You're talking about unifying the party. The Republican Party is unified like a mug, man. 90% of Republicans approve of Trump's work. While y'all up here trying to stop the, oh, the only man who can defeat Trump based on evidence, based on 538, I'm not a friend of 538, but based on y'all polling, your internal polling from the media, from the uh, liberal-led media, they saying this man can, is defeating Trump. We already knew he was able to defeat Trump. We knew that way back in 2008. You guys just coming around to it. Yet you still are trying to do whatever you can to stop this guy and put in somebody that's going to cater toward your desires. Not the people desires, but the party elites desires. And what do you mean by that? The party elites, they don't want to, they don't want to change nothing. They like the way they, they'd rather deal with Trump than have Bernie Sanders, a person like Bernie Sanders or a person like Tulsi Gabbard, somebody like that, um, get in that White House. These billionaires going out here crying, you know, afraid. You want to label uh, this man a socialist when you're the biggest socialist of them all. You, you're a corporate socialist. You depend on the government to give you subsidies and tax breaks so you can keep more money in your pocket. That is what you call a socialism program. Now, just to remind you, like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button to let everybody no, um, so you can know this video is dropped. Um, and going forward, still on this 25 by 25 campaign, we got a few people that did donate. I appreciate you donating, okay? Um, thank you. Um, we need more people. We need more people. So, um, uh, on this 25 by 25 by 25, again, I'll explain to you. There's a lot of upgrading I need to do uh, when it comes to the show, when it comes to the place that I'm doing the show at. There's a lot of things that I need to do to accommodate those things, especially right now. Um, and we're looking for partners to participate in this. A remnant. We're not looking for everybody with over 10,000 subscribers. Um, I'm 25 people who, who has the whereabout to donate $25 to this first phase of this endeavor. And the first phase of, the, is of this endeavor do include computer repair, uh, upgrade, um, and um, the ability to go out in the field during the New York primaries. I want to be out there in the field during the New York primaries, not just here in, in studio on a camera. I don't want to just do my stuff here. I want to actually get out there and talk to the political leaders. I found out that in uh, once you hit 10,000 subscribers, the YouTube studios here will allow you to host shows there. Um, and I want to do that. So let's say I have Jemani, Jemani Williams. I want to talk to J Jemani Williams. Jemani Williams is a public advocate for New York City. And uh, he's trying to push this paid, uh, 10 days paid, uh, personal paid leave, personal time off, PTO, 10 days. So he's basically saying, look, corporations are trying to sham the workers. We just fought hard with de Blasio to get five paid sick days. See, Bloomberg would have never gave you five paid sick days. Bloomberg is against the $15 minimum wage. I got him on record on video on a TV show saying I'm not for the $15 minimum wage. He thought it was a uh, it would be tragic to New York City and it would kill businesses in New York City. 
and he lied is not true. <laughs> so now we have $15 minimum wage thanks to de Blasio. So I want to get an opportunity to talk to de Blasio or his wife. I want to get an opportunity to talk to Jemani Williams about this PTO time. So I need you guys to help me get out in the field to do these things. So I got, um, you know, I got a decent camera. I can bring my camera. I have a mic. I don't, to me, I don't try to go over and above. Uh, I try to be a minimal, minimalist, if you want to call that a minimalist, even though I believe go hard, go big. In some cases, you you can be a minimalist at. Like, for an example, I don't need nobody donating money for a new camera. I have a camera. You know, um, one of the supporters, Vegematic, um, he donated to me this Blue Yeti. Now, I can get a smaller um, microphone that can um, pick up sound from the front, back, side to side. Because my lapel mic is not going to do that. So when I go interview them, I'll take something I already got, I, the Blue Yeti mic. And I have this webcam that I have that's 4K, 60 frames per second, incredible webcam. I don't have to take my camera with me. Um, the thing I need, once I take care of some needs here at home, the things I need after that is a, uh, a laptop. Um, that's at least i7 or i9 with a good processor because the webcam that I have and it will not handle 4k the lowest it'll handle is 720p and it's usually at 30 frames per second and if you know photography and videography that is low HD quality yet I have a 4k camera that produces 60 frames per second television quality videos but my computer cannot handle it so once we take care of phase one things i need to take care of here at home in studio phase two i want to go in and take care of get a laptop i don't want to try to do this on my own uh it's all about partnership and uh giving credit where credit is due as you see i will give you credit and big you up and see if i can you know return the favor in the biggest way that i can but when I go out here to talk to these politicians and we're in probably one of those YouTube studios, I think they let you get one or two days a month, one studio um, set a month. So the studio set that I have right are on reserve for the primaries right now, it looks like I'm in a diner. <laughs> now I can actually go to a diner uh, to meet these people, but the studio is awesome and you know, we together achieved that landmark where we can go in there and get access to those studios uh, for free. So that's that. So continue people to do the 25 by 25 um, within this 25 hour time frame. We're still at that time frame. And um, let's make it happen. Now, um, the primaries are coming up in New York City. And like I said, I want to be prepared. I want to be out there on the field talking to these people asking the questions that you want me to answer so anybody who's donating um that, uh, that's part of that brigade you can give me five questions that you want me to ask these politicians so if i happen to bump, bump into bernie sanders i already know what i'm going to ask them but give me some questions that you want me to ask them if it's um de blasio i mean not de blasio if it's a bloomberg Bloomberg ain't gonna have nobody answer. Bloomberg doesn't do interviews. It, I mean, Bloomberg really have to. You have to really twist his hand to get him on a national television interview. He don't do regular people interviews. He's not gonna see me. You, you don't understand. This guy's a wealthy billionaire plutocrat that really, really feel like he don't need you for anything. You just y'all need him. And if you want me to defeat Trump, you will vote for me because you need me. Bloomberg is not the type of person that say, I need you, you need me, we need one another, it's all love. Nah, I ain't with him with that. <laughs> so, um, but um, if you do donate within um, this time frame that I got right now, uh, $25 or more, uh, you can write five questions down and I'll put it in my, um, um, in my, um, um, my PowerPoint 
because I'm going to ask these questions. If I get a chance to meet, I want to ask these questions. What are you going to do? Uh, so you get opportunity to do that. By all means, you can go ahead and do that. Let's get in this story. The New Hampshire primary is done. It's over with. But you got a few people that got a bump off that New Hampshire primary. And Amy Klobuchar, who everybody thought was down and out, I'm like, why is she still in the race? And how in the freaking world she's still getting enough polling to get into the debates? Who is behind Amy Klobuchar? Well, we see some people behind Amy Klobuchar. We see this sister with the Amy Klobuchar shirt on. See this guy with the glasses on. They're excited. Well, let's listen to Amy Klobuchar's speech uh, on um, after the primaries. Now, she came in, I think, fifth place. But she's smiling like a winner up here. <laughs> you know, because she, she was surprised she got that much support. I was surprised. So, she's happy. I'm happy for her. She ain't going to win, but I'm still happy for her. So, this is what she had to say. <laughs> uh, once she won this primary, this is what, well, she didn't win the primary. She far from winning the primary. Uh, this is what she said. Oh, yeah, by the way, just to remind you, if, um, for those, um, you donate through paypal.me forward slash Bob TV NYC, all caps, paypal.me. Bob TV NYC, all caps. Uh, you could donate there uh, $25 or more. And I really appreciate it. And hey, I do got some merch uh, on the website. Uh, I got two shirts so far. One is No Slut Voting in 2020. I think that, that I mean, to me, that's a that shirt says it all because it's going to act. People going to come up to you and they're going to say, What do you mean by slut voting? What do you mean by slut voting? No slut voting in 2020. And then you guys get a chance to answer them on that question because I educated you on what a slut voter is. Slut voter is somebody who just vote for anybody down the ticket and don't even know who they are, have no relationship, don't know their voting record and think that these people are on their side and they're not. And I was one of the biggest slut voters of all times, man. I would go in there and just go straight D. And then I find out a couple of, uh, a couple of people that I did put in office, I had one judge and when I finally found out about that judge, I hated myself that I voted for that judge. The Republican judge, for some reason, had more leniency for black kids and Latino kids here in the Bronx than the one that was a Democrat. I mean, they went hard, man. It was like that, you know, you got that black cop that got to impress his white uh, fellow cops. You know, and if they do something brutalizing black kids and Latino kids, they just sit there sucking on a doggone blow pop watching and not doing nothing. Talking about, mm hmm, you had it coming to you. I said, for, I said, ever since that time, I said, I will never, ever in my life slut vote. I just gave up my precious goodies to somebody I don't even know. That is the definition of slut voter. And you can wear that shirt. And when people ask you that question, you can tell them. So you'll, you'll be able to purchase that shirt. Also got the um, no black agenda, no vote. I really believe if, you, if you're not going to, I'm putting you in office to cater toward my community. There's certain things my community need um, that even though we try hard, try our best to get, there's certain laws in place that's blocking us from do, having these things flood in our community. And we need you to go into Washington, D.C. or into this um, assembly in New York or whatever and fight to have those things removed. So if you're not going to fight for my agenda, you don't need my vote. So that's the no agenda, black agenda. No. So those shirts are available. So you guys got to be really crafty. These people are going to come ask you for their vote and they're not telling you anything. They're not communicating why they need your vote what they're going to do for your community, how they're going to fight for you, how they're going to legislate for you, because that's the reason why they go to office. They go to office to fight for their constituency. The constituents are their most important asset. They're the one got there set in Washington, D.C. or in um, Albany. 
You are their number one asset. Yet you're putting their ass and setting them up in D.C. or whatever. And, and they have done nothing for you in the past 10 years. Go check the record. Go check the record. So that's why it's important that you don't slow vote. But let's get into this. Amy Klobuchar comes in, what, fifth, sixth place? And she's excited. And she got every right to be excited because she got one or two delegates and she got a good chunk of votes in New Hampshire. Let's listen to Amy Klobuchar. Now, see, you, she's excited, but she said, I'm Amy Klobuchar, and I can defeat Donald Trump. Now, if I had this in post, I probably would have Kevin Hart laughing. I probably have uh, uh, Charlie Murphy laughing at uh, uh, Prince when he said that, uh, let's, let's go play some basketball. I'd have had about 15 people laughing at this statement because she knows she cannot beat this guy. I don't understand what is wrong with these Democratic elites. If you don't look at the data and you don't look, look at the groundwork, she don't have a dedicated following. Trump got a dedicated following called MAGA. She don't have 100% of the base on her side. Trump got 100% of the Republicans, at least 90% of Republicans on his side. They are launched, stocked, falling behind Trump. Trump popularity has risen so much to the point that they're afraid to go against Trump because Trump can go out there and campaign and have that person um, be primary. He took a page out of Bernie Sanders' book and, and, and developed an organization that will primary people who are not going to do the will of the people. And see, that's something Barack Obama didn't do in his um um, third year in his second year, I think his second year, when it was time for the House and Senate to go back and vote, Obama did not go out there and campaign and say, look, if these people are not going to pass my plan, I'm going to go out there and rally against them. I'm going to find a um, person to primary them that believes what we believe, and I'm going to fight to get that person in office and get this person removed out of office. Obama didn't do that. Had he did that, we could have had single-payer health care, um, at least with a public option by now. But instead, we lost a 1,000 seats because Obama didn't use the pulley pit to go back and forth. See, I thought that, well, you know, the Republicans are just trying to block Obama. Anything good he's trying to do, they're blocking them. And it was true. They're blocking them. So what do you do with people who are blocking the legislation that you're trying to push? You find somebody to get their butt out of office who's going to be supporting the legislation. So Trump is actually doing that in the Republican Party. They're not going to go against Trump. They're lock stock behind Trump because Trump is so popular within the party. Within the party, he is at 90 something percent popularity. Across the nation, he's 52. He's between 48 and 52. He's on the same level as Barack Obama. I know it sounds crazy. I know you can't fathom this. How can this knucklehead be neck and neck with Barack Obama? It's because the Democratic Party doing this witch hunt. Try, you guys made this guy look like you tried so hard to make him look like a victimizer that you end up making him look like a victim. And people always rally around the person who were a victim than the person who was a victimizer. You made yourself look like you were the victimizers. And you're still doing it. You don't have to do it right now. Voting is coming up in the next six, next five, four months now. No, next five months. It's five, eight, nine, it's one of them. It's coming up this year. You don't have to continue to go on this thing of 
I got something else I can impeach Trump on. I can. When you find something that you know both Republicans and Democrats will impeach him on, that's when you push it. Not stuff that you only believe you can impeach him on when you're not going to be able to get it through the Senate. You made this guy more popular. You made him more popular. And right now, it's to the point that the Democratic, I mean, the Republican Party is so behind Trump that anything he tell you to do, you're going to do it. Because he can have you primaried. So how in the world do Amy Klobuchar think she can defeat Trump when, number one, she don't have a strong following. Number two, she's so low on the totem pole, it's ridiculous. Her polling numbers, sure, she supposedly did great in, uh, not great, but more than expected in Iowa and more than expected in New Hampshire. But you cannot defeat Trump. You can't. Most of the Republicans cannot defeat him. And you better believe, you know, one thing about um, that Republican vote against Trump from Mitt Romney is Mitt Romney know he's in a city that loves him. That's the only thing about Trump. He, ain't gonna, he can't primary nobody against him. But Mitch McConnell and up these other numb nuts, he can primary them. Well, let's continue to hear what she said. She said, I'm Amy Klobuchar. I could defeat Trump. <laughs> that was one of the funniest jokes. Well, you're a comedian, Amy. You need to be, you need to be on Apollo. You need, to be on, you need to be somewhere. My heart, my heart is full tonight. My heart is full tonight. Well, there are still ballots left to count. We have beaten the odds every step of the way. She said her heart is full. So is the ish that she has in her buttocks. <laughs> so is she. She's full of ish. <laughs> uh, Deval Patrick got 375 votes. Total write-ins, 1,346. That's probably Trump trolling. He probably told some people go over there and write in some people. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't think so. Nevada, maybe, but not South Carolina. All right, so she said, when it comes to campaigning, it's not about the biggest dollar and the loudest voice. Well, actually, Amy Klobuchar, it does take money to run a campaign, and the biggest dollars ain't got to come from billionaires. It could come from the regular people since you're taking a pop shot. Also, the loudest voice is necessary. It doesn't matter how loud it is. You can be loud and don't have nothing to say, but whoever you shooting is at, and I think I know who you're shooting this at. He has a loud voice and he has substance behind his loud voice. So he's just not a loud voice. But you got people that's coming up on the come up. Uh, Mini Mike. I'm going to use that term too. Uh, talk too soft, man. Oh, man, man. Trump will eat that guy up, man. I don't know why people think he can beat Trump, man. It's Trump buddy. Trying to outdivide the divider in chief. We know. 
We cannot win. Pop shots. These centric Democrats are doing pop shots. We cannot. Let's go back and listen to that. We cannot win by dividing those ideas into action. We know that we cannot win big by trying to outdivide the divider in chief. We know we can't win by trying to outdivide the divider in chief. Who is trying to divide out divide the divider in chief? Your freaking party, Amy Clover Child. Your freaking party. Tom Perez on down is trying to out divide. You guys are trying to out divide. You're doing whatever you can to shun the progressive base. That's what you're doing. You're so focused on party unity that you're going to miss out the whole point of country unity. See, the person who you call a divider in chief, and I know pretty much who where it is going. That person actually, it is not his job. You're not going to bring 100% of the world together. You're not going to bring 100% of the country together. Heck, God can't even do that. I mean, I can't say he can't. He can do all things. He, he don't want to do that. If he wanted to do that, he would do it. He gave people a free will. You... You in no way, shape, or form, you probably can unify a certain aspect of the Democratic Party, but you can't unify the Democratic Party because the progressives don't like you. You're not going to unify a Democratic Party, so give it up. Because half of the Democratic Party has a whole different direction that they're going, and the party is going the other way. So when you got something going this way and something going that way, it's automatically going to cause a rift. It's going to cause a tear. And what the person who you popping shot is doing, he's saying, I'm trying to unify America. I'm giving something. What I have, my platform and my position is able to bring the country together. The problem is you guys are doing whatever you can to buck against that platform. I keep telling people it ain't about Bernie Sanders or anybody running. It's about that platform. You run on that platform, America will rally around that platform because that platform is the basic needs of American society. A lot of them we had before and numb nuts like centric politicians in the Democratic Party and conservative politicians in the Republican Party has totally gone away from being a people, people-centered party, party. And it has caused a rift in America in general. And these policies are bringing people together. You look at the polling on Medicare for All and you see how far it's well over the 60s in percentage. No tuition, tuition free education is well in the 80s. That's unity. And you talking about you could defeat Trump. Trump party is solid behind him. This platform is saying you might be solid behind Trump, but you Trump voters. This is something you know you and your family need. You can buck and hide. You can call it a socialist program. You can do everything under the sun to try to discredit. But you know you need health care. You know your mother need it. You know your uncle need it. You know your sister need it. And trying to make excuse to get uh, keep the current health care system right now that's felon and got people in bankruptcy is not enough. You know doggone well. That if there was initiative, a ballot initiative, which I believe in, if there was a ballot initiative for Medicare for all outside of electing the president, Republicans and Democrats and, uh, you know, independents, green, libertarian, they all would check it off. Majority of them would check it off. That's what you call unifying the country. It's po- policies will unify a country. Y'all sitting up here fighting over unifying the Democratic Party, and I believe I can unify the Democratic Party when your policies are causing a rift within the party. You want to continue to get money to Wall Street when Main Street, y'all took the money from Main Street and gave it to Wall Street and don't want to make Wall Street pay Main Street back. You talking about, you don't think that's going to cause tension? You don't think that's making people leave the freaking party? 
you hollering at how evil Trump is, but behind closed doors, you're voting right along with Trump. You vote along with Trump on his budget cut. You tr vote along with Trump on military spending. And, uh, Chuck Schumer fast-tracked over 50 of Trump judges. And you're talking about party unity, and I can defeat Trump. Get out of here with that stuff. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to calm myself down. I don't want, I mean, I don't want to get overworked. I'm losing my voice. Uh, and I'm trying to stay focused on this goal that I have. And if you haven't donated, go ahead and donate at BobTVNYC forward slash PayPal. I mean, PayPal.me forward slash BobTVNYC. Don't super chat because I'm looking at YouTube now. I did look at my analy analytics. I do have some money there, but I can't get it to the end of the month because Google is like the military. They pay you at first of the month. And uh, there's a threshold you have to meet before they release the money. So for those who are planning on giving through a super chat, I appreciate you. And I, I, and I will answer your questions, but don't do it through super chat. Super chat, they hold it in a banking, they hold it in a reserve, and once you hit a threshold number, then they'll release it. But the problem with Super Chat is if you decide to give me $50, they're gonna take $30 out of that $50. And not only is that robbing me, it's robbing you because you didn't give them $30. You gave it here to go to the mission of this channel. And I don't want you to be robbed, and I don't want to be robbed even though my name is Rob. I want you to do it through PayPal. That way, majority of money is coming straight to this channel. You know, because I've seen a couple of people do super, give super chats. And I appreciate the super chats, but it's not going to do nothing right now, but make them rich. So what I'm trying to do, I'm actually going through the, I'm actually trying to fight them back and I don't want them I usually check when, when I upload these videos, I do not check monetization because I know as soon as I check monetization, before the video is finishing uploading and they haven't even watched the video yet, they're going based on the title, they're going to demonetize me or they're going to put limited advertising on me, which means most of that money is not going to come to me. I put a song up there. And the song was in the video and I couldn't get it out the video. And now the person who owns the right to that song gets all the money off that video. They don't let us split it, you know. Like let's say, remember I used to do Freedom on Fire and it always started off with the OJ's Fire? Well, they had no problem with that for almost four years. Now they got a problem with that. And that's the reason why I haven't did a Freedom on Fire episode in a long time. Because they don't give the OJs half of the um, advertising money and give me half. They give all of it to the OJs. Now, I love the OJs, but OJs didn't sit here and, and go produce this video. <laughs> you know, at least split it. You know, don't give all, all, all the money for this video to the OJs. That's not fair. So that's why I, that's why I always... Talk about PayPal.me forward slash Bob TV NYC all caps because I want to make sure that whenever you do donate, I want to make sure your money goes to um, all of it goes to the efforts of Bob TV Network. Let me get back to Amy Klobuchar. Let's let's listen to her. We know that we win by bringing people with us instead of shutting them out. Donald Trump's worst nightmare. She said, we know we bring people with us instead of shutting us out, shutting them out. Amy Klobuchar, what party are you with? What party are you with? I was at the DNC convention in Philadelphia, and they literally put people out. They took Nina Turner from the speech list because they were afraid Nina Turner was going to expose them of the... Uh, of the crookedness they did before the convention when it finally came out that Hillary Clinton and the DNC rigged this election and people were upset. People was ready to rally. People were ready to riot at that um, convention. And you had people in the convention hall that was protesting the rigging. And then you guys are trying to put sound blasters that, so their voice can't be heard. You're trying to um, shut off 
um, the lights in the section where they're sitting at. You pull their credentials um, off their neck. They literally had to come in there and tape up their mouth to, in protest to show the silence that you made toward them. A lot of them left the convention and went home and you had all these freaking empty seats. So, so you're going to run a Craigslist ad and pay people $50 to sit in those seats. And you talking about we bring people together. Get out of here with that mess, man. You guys are something else, man. You guys are something else. Oh, God. Bringing the people together. The Democrat, the Republicans are more. They are more. You look at their base and look at your base. They are more together. Their base is more together. More strong and solid than your base will ever be. Bernie Sanders don't even have to be in this race. And that party will be fractured. Because you don't have a true standard bearer. And the ones you're throwing up there are not standard bearers. And there's a difference between a standard bearer and those who you bear to stand. And the people you putting up there, most America can barely stand them. So, <laughs> all right, let me keep going. Is that the people in the middle, the people who have had enough of the name calling and the mud slinging, have someone to vote for in November? So what she's trying to say is, I'm the most centrist one. I'm the center. I'm the calming piece. I'm the uh, I'm the moderate that that's gonna bring the party together, progressives and Democrats. You can't bring together people who don't like you, Amy. Progressives don't like you. They don't like you. Your your, you know, and you might be a likable person, but your record they don't like. Your record as a prosecutor is just horrible. And I keep telling people, prosecutors do not make great presidents and they shouldn't even be in the office of AG. Because all they do is prosecute. I'd rather have a person that prostitute in office than to prosecute. At least they are free about their living. Let me stop <laughs> She actually think that she is the one. See, Bill Maher started this mess. I like Amy Klobuchar. What do you like about Amy Klobuchar? Well, she's not extreme. She's not moderate. She's modest and moderate. Bill Maher, brother, you worth millions of dollars. You don't go through what the average American, and every American don't have your talent. We don't have your money. And fine, you earn your million. You're worth $25 million, man. You, you, you're you good. But when it comes to this, man, you just need to sit your butt down. Because we got people that are struggling with health care right now. I am currently pissed off at Governor Cuomo right now because he gave his word that if we got rid of the IDC in 2016, he will sign New York will be the first to go with Medicare for All. Meaning, you get what you need at the point of service. You get the same high quality doctor at the point of service and you don't have to come out of your pocket. It's paid by the taxpayers of New York State. And actually, it's not paid by the taxpayers of New York State. There was a certain area of funding that was sitting there that he could pull the research sources from to pay for this for every person living in New York State. It's still sitting on this desk right now. That's why you guys got to speak up, get on Twitter, get on Facebook, and really call him out for being a liar. Call him a liar. See, when the same thing happened when it came to the primaries. He said, we're going to move the primaries, the register, um, the deadline to register for the primary, we're going to move it from August. Who has their deadlines in August? Our primaries isn't to the following year. So who has their primary deadline six months before the freaking primaries? Well, New York State had it. So he said, look, we're going to pass in a law that um, you'll be able to register up to a month before the primaries. I wish he would go further and say you can register the day of the primaries. You should be able to have your day off to vote. 
you should be able to register to vote on that day. You should be, and you shouldn't have to be required to be in a party to vote for a particular person in your party. Cuomo still got the piece of paper laying. Well, he had the piece of paper laying on the desk. Advocates like us, we called them out for it. And um, we called them out for it. And he came to pressure and finally pushed it up. You got to do the same thing. New Yorkers, if you hear me, you got to apply the pressure on Governor Cuomo to sign the bill. Say, it sounded like Governor Cuomo lied saying he would sign Medicare uh, for all, making New York State the first country, first city to go Medicare for all. I mean, state to go Medicare for all. He said that if we get rid of the IDC, he would approve it immediately. Why haven't he done it? Is he a liar or is he not a liar? I believe he's a liar and state why. And put out there, every person in New York that suffers in pain, that if that's afraid to go to a hospital because of a bill, that die because they didn't want to get their treatment because of a bill, that's on his fault. That's on his watch. I don't know how I'm coming off that, but let's go back. Y'all sound like a doggone fool. Amy Klobuchar ain't being Trump. Boy, these fascinations, these imaginations and fascinations of a person. You don't have nothing to say that Amy Klobuchar can beat Trump. Trump is not as hated as you think he is. This country is bigger than you. And Trump has become a smart political operative. Trump is smart, and Trump, <laughs> y'all. I mean, y'all keep thinking that man a dummy. He may not can spell, but he knows how to market. And what he does is, okay, you holding a rally, I'm gonna hold a rally. Trump had a rally, the same time Bernie Sanders had a rally. Bernie Sanders rally in New Hampshire, New Hampshire was huge. Rock concert is off the chain. Trump, huge. Yeah, I don't think it was a rock concert, but the people loved it. They were standing out in line for miles. Amy Klobuchar, <laughs> her rally sucked. It sucked. She barely, she barely filled up a, a, a meeting hall in a hotel. Bernie Sanders had an arena at a college, and they had a concert, rock concert. Trump had an arena across town, same area. Yeah, she's going to say she can sit up here and beat Trump. And these people talking about, Amy can beat Trump. Amy can beat Trump. And you have nothing, 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 nothing showing you that she has the power to defeat Trump. You can say it till you're blue in the face and don't make it so. I, I cannot wait to bring our green bus around the country. I, I cannot wait to win the nomination. I can't wait to get fire up the green. Boy, this is comical. I can't wait to fire up my green bus. Okay. I can't wait to win the nomination. You're going to be waiting a long time because you ain't win no nomination. And number two, you realize this is not a victory speech for New Hampshire? You did not win New Hampshire, Amy Klobuchar. You came in fifth freaking place or fourth place. Let's say fourth place. You didn't win. It's just sucked that Joe Biden came behind you. Now that's hilarious. Joe Biden, Mr. Electable, got beat out by Amy Klobuchar. Charles. That is funny. And everything that she's saying out of mouth right now is hilarious. You hear this? Give, give me more. Let me go back. And win with a movement of fired up Democrats, of independent.
independents and moderate republicans so we're going to win this thing with fired up democrats with independent moderate republicans and we're going to win this thing you only have moderate democrats behind your campaign amy clover child you don't have all the democratic party behind you you only have the moderates no Republican is backing you up, girl. No independence is backing you up. None of that. You don't have a grass movement. You don't have a rock solid base. And you don't have enough that's going to get people out to the poll. You don't know how to get people out to the poll. And when I hear you talk, I just want to go hit my head across the pole. Or I might want to go get drunk and watch some strippers swing on the pole. That's, that's what I get when I listen to you. Now, give me a moment. Let, let me stop here. I know you said, Rob, you always stop. I, but when these people start talking, I got so much to say. She said a economic. She is not the one to talk economics, man. I'm not the one to talk economics. She don't listen to me. I'm broke right now. <laughs> um, you are a modern Democrat that kisses the butt to corporations. You're going to lay on the floor and die for corporations who are not even part of your constituents, but you won't lift a finger to help your constituents in Michigan. It, it, it doesn't make sense, man. It doesn't make sense for you to say this stuff. Oh, boy. So why don't y'all stop saying we got to do everything to get rid of Trump? We already know this. You make it seem like Trump is our biggest dividers. What unites us is the policies. What divides us is you trying to do whatever you can to not go back to the corporate elites and let them know, look, I'm going with the policies because this policy, American on these few policies right here, Americans, Americans are uniting around these policies. So, unfortunately, Mr. Big Money, who want to put all this um, billion dollars in my pocket to lobby and pass laws for him, I'm not turning my back on the people. I'm not turning my back on the people. But no, she's going to kiss to the military complex. All these companies, she's going to be kissing up to them. She's not going to do one thing for these people. What have you heard? What are some of Amy Klobuchar's child's signature policies? If you know it, put it down in the comment section. Tell me some of her signature policies. At least Andrew Yang, who dropped out of that race, at least he had a UBI. Tulsi Gabbard is the, um, uh, bringing our troops home and using that money and using it for domestic interests like um, Medicare for all, no cost education, or... Uh, at least they got some. What do you got, Amy Klobuchar? Well, I just want to make sure everything stays the same. And um, we bring everybody back to the middle, back to the center uh, for America to progress. Ha, 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 hi, Nera Tandon. These politicians, man. I don't understand why people get behind people who haven't even given them a reason to vote for them. Well, she, he's black. Bruh. So, if, if that's the case, you might want to vote for Ben Carson. He's black. Herman Cain was black. You don't vote on people because they color. You vote, color makes you feel good and makes you proud, but that wears out after a while when that sucker don't do nothing for you. The reason you put people in office is they're there to represent you, the constituents. They're not there to build them an elaborate career for themselves, which they're going to end up getting anyway. Once they get there, 
That's why I'm going to be running for office. I need a check to come in every month whether y'all kick me out the next two years or not. I still get checks in health care. <laughs> so you might find me. Why. Look, I, look, where I live at right now, I might run for office in two years. <laughs> I'm telling you, I might run for city council here in this city where I'm at right now. In two years, I might run for city council. And then I may run for mayor. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because it, it, it it's not rocket science. To me, the greatest politicians, the greatest leaders in our lifetime are people who have a heart for working people. People who want to do whatever they can to come up with legislation to lift up the people. Not just the corporations. And Amy Klobuchar, her number one focus has always been the corporations. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Guys, look, I mean, I'm serious. I had a five-year goal of getting up out of this state. But now, because I love New York, and I love the people of New York, I wouldn't go back to my hometown and run for office. Most of those people don't know me. But I'm on purpose going to events here in my local city to get to know police officers, politicians, um, you know, working with kids. And, and Matter of fact, next month I'm going to be working at an organization that I get to work with the kids and the elderly and all that. And I'm seeing that even though this is something I love to do, I'm actually putting myself out there to be recognized as a leader in the community. So I might run for office in this community. All right, let me keep going. We know that we believe, so many of us believe, that the heart of America is bigger than the heart of this guy in the White House. The heart of America is bigger than the heart of the guy in the White House. Amy Klobuchar, the heart of America supports this guy in the White House more than they support you. So what make you think you could pull away from his support and get him out of office? Come on now. Oh, God, I don't want to hear the story. Oh, God, just stab me in the ear. What be the, oh, God. That predicted I wouldn't even get through that speech. But not the people of my state and not the people of New Hampshire. Except then they predicted that we wouldn't make it through the summer. We did. Then they predicted we wouldn't make it to the debates. And man, were we at the debate in New Hampshire. I still don't know how that happened. What we've been is steady, we've been strong, and we've never quit. I think that sounds pretty good for a president. But across, across the months and months and miles of this race, we've redefined the word grit. You see it with our happy, scrappy campaign. You saw it, you saw it in our 10-county, 30-hour tour in the middle of a nor'easter. Let's not forget that. You saw it in our early morning diner stops and our late night rallies. And yes, you saw it on that debate stage. Just like so many of you out there, I know a little bit about resilience. My grandpa worked 1,500 Oh, God. Here she is with the story about her grandpa. He oh, God. Because his parents were sick. He had nine brothers and sisters. And he had to help them. And every day he would go down in that cage, in that mine, carrying a lunch bucket that my grandma would pack. His youngest sister, Hannah, was only eight years old when they put her in an orphanage. And he vowed after his parents died that he would... Guys, can I skip this? I don't want to hear this mess, man. Come on, man. He went to I want to hear the story. Community. I mean... I mean, you could tell a story. One of the greatest stories I heard was Barack Obama talking about, oh, oh, look, look here. Uh, I come from a long life for family. Uh, and uh, my mom was 
a white woman from Kansas and my father, uh, a blacker than black, black, black man from that, um, Kenya. Uh, so my story is America. <laughs> but Obama told that story and I was like, yeah. Oh, well, first, 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 uh, look, look, my, my life is America's stories. You know, I, 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 from Kansas all the way to New York City, while I was a student at Columbia University, and, um, you know, and that's where I got my first, uh, first hands-on experience, uh, with the community of New York City, uh. Then I went to Harvard Law School and I became the editor of the, of the Harvard Review. And uh, that's when I got in touch with um, the Elite Society. And then after I graduated from Harvard, I became a community organizer uh, down there in the hoods of Chicago, where I met my beautiful wife, uh, Michelle, and we got busy and out came Sasha and Malia. And we went on this trail to chain Chicago, and we got with Jeremiah Wright, and we learned a lot of things about our people right there in that church. And then it was time for me to run for office. And uh, you know, uh, you know, I do a little good. And they asked me, "Did I smoke weed?" And I said, "Yeah, I smoke weed. I smoked a lot of weed." What's up with that? Why are you asked me such a dumb question? And and uh, hey, look. Hunter Biden can smoke cocaine. Why? Why? Why I can't smoke weed? You know. And my daughter, she got caught smoking smoking weed. Uh, so what's the big deal? What's the big deal? It'll be a cold day in hell. <laughs> Let me stop. Let me keep going. <laughs> daughter of a teacher and a newspaper man, as the first woman elected to the U.S. Senate from the state of Minnesota, and a, and a candidate for president of the United States. So she's the first woman elected to the Senate in the state of Minnesota. Why it took so long? Minnesota, what's up with y'all, Minnesota? Come on, man. I mean, y'all the home of Prince, man. Z Z the home of Keith Ellison, what's up? Ah, God, let's go. I went to the legislature, worked. That's how I do. I don't care. Your family ain't going to help me. me. Me knowing about, I mean, Amy Klobuchar history of her family not going to help the American public. It's a great story. So great, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> All right? So, and her going up the ladder in politics is important to me because it's important that you know their past but my main thing is your constituents put you in office what have you done for your constituents and if we're putting you in office which I'm not going to ever 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 do I don't care who's in the White House I don't do the any blue would do thing what are you going to do for the American people Amy what's your policies Amy
In my case, it was elected to the U.S. Senate. No one. Who told her that? Who told her a woman could not be elected? Man, we, we got over 25 years of politics and within the past 25 years, we done had so many women get elected. What fool gonna tell a woman that she can't be elected when there are so many freaking women in the office sitting in the office? That would be dumb. And what and, 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 and even entertain that. Somebody say that to you, ladies, if somebody say that to you, smack them in the face and then pull out your phone and show them all the women in the office right now that's already elected. And if you need to go back in history and show the women in history like Shirley Chisholm and all them, smack them first and then show them. Any man go tell a woman that she cannot be elected to an office is a, a damn fool. So to hear, to hear politicians saying this stuff now, it really, I don't understand. Who, t who would be dumb enough to tell you that, Amy Klobuchar? And for Elizabeth Warren to say Bernie told her that, that man got people, he has, he created an organization that elected 35 women this, I mean, not 35 women this year, but he has helped get elected women for office. So for her to say that on the stage, man, everybody knew she was lying out of behind. That's why they call her Chief Lyalata. She was lying out of her behind. Everybody knew that. And that's why her polls dropped. She was the hot thing. It was not Pete Buttigieg. And it wasn't Amy Klobuchar. Senator Wong was the person to beat. Until she lied on him. Everybody knew that was a bald-faced lie. Bernie Sanders got a strong history of trying to get gay people elected. He got a strong history of getting... Man, if, if when it came to um, Jesse Jackson running for office... All white people shun Jesse Jackson in the Democratic Party. But here come Bernie Sanders coming to the support of Jesse Jackson. The first one to come to the support of Jesse Jackson. And then they started following Jesse Jackson a little bit. So I don't know where they, who said this stuff, man. And like I said, women, if any, any man tell you that, you need to smack them and then they doggone face, number one. And I usually don't promote violence. But that's deserve a smacking. And then show them all the women that's already been elected in office from the top to the bottom. That's just stupid. Hillary Clinton, I don't even agree with Hillary Clinton, don't like her policies, but she at least she got way more votes than Trump. And if it was based on votes alone, she would be president. But unfortunately, in the United States. When it comes to electing a president, it's a game of chess by winning the states. It's not by popular vote. And it's designed that way because certain states have a huge area of population. Trump beat her in the states. She refused to go to the states that her and her husband uh, policies devastated back in the 90s. Least thing she could have did. Least thing she could have did is went back and did an apology tour, like Michael Bloomberg is trying to do. That's not going to be a success. All right, let me keep going. Woman had ever done it before, but I came back. I defied expectations, and I won. And I have done it. And I have done it over and over again in the reddest of red districts and the bluest of blue districts. And when I got to the U.S. Senate, people told me. I'm Hold up. She said she won in the red is a red district and the blue is a blue district. How many districts you live in, Amy Klobuchar? You got to check these politicians. How many districts you lived in? Oh, it's so hard to get things done. Well, in that gridlock of Washington, D.C., I have passed over 100 bills as the lead Democrat. <laughs> Tonight in New Hampshire, as everyone had counted us out, even a week ago. Again, when you consider putting your name on a signature of a bill, how can you say that you. You got to understand the difference between crafting the bill, developing the bill, and working to get it passed, than actually passing the bill. 
any number of senators, any number of congressmen, whether it's in the House and Senate, can say they pass a certain amount of bills because your name goes on the bill and you're considered a person who helped pass that bill. So for her to say, I passed over 100 bills, that ain't nothing. I know somebody that passed thousands of bills. Passing the bill just basically means you wrote your signature that you agree and you're voting for this bill to help get it passed. You did not create hundreds of bills and worked hard to get your personal bill passed. It's two different things. But she's going to put this as a chuck on a resume, a notch on a belt, that I passed 100 bills. You're not the only one passed 100 bills. I'm quite sure there's a bunch of people who've been in there just the same amount of time as you, and a lot of them females, pass the same amount of bills, and there's probably some that's female that pass more bills than you. But what she's trying to do is she's trying to tell the public that I pass more bills than anybody running. She can't say actually that, but she's putting an image in her mind about I passed a lot of bills. So did Bernie Sanders. So did Biden. So did Mike Bloomberg. And Mike Bloomberg never been a senator. He passed bills um, with the um, council here in New York City. Most of them horrible as crap, but he passed them. So you're not the only person that know how to pass a bill, Amy. But you're trying to, you see, framing is everything. Perception is everything. And if you're not, if you're not like a political addict like me, and that's sometimes a problem because sometimes I don't get enough sleep. You got, you can, you, you got, you got to catch this. It's like, it's like being a person that, um, uh, react to hip hop music and rappers in their lyrics. If you don't analyze what that person is saying, you are gonna miss a whole lot that person is saying. But when you on purpose analyze the words that they're putting their pen to, uh, you'll realize that something amazing is coming out of what they're saying, and something is amazing what she's saying. It's an amazing lie. She's trying to make herself look like that she's the only one that got, can get bills passed. And she's not the only one that can get bills passed. The whole purpose of being in Congress is to get bills passed. And if you're not there to help pass bills, then you are not, you, that you don't need to be there. Go. Thank you, pundits. <laughs> I came back and we delivered. Uh, the whole funny thing about this whole entire speech, and that's the reason why I'm showcasing this, is this is a speech that Amy Klobuchar is giving in New Hampshire, one of the smallest states in the country. Small now. And she giving this speech as if she came number one, as if she won. Bernie won it. She didn't win it. Heck, I would give her credit if she, I would say the speech would be worthy of doing if she won second place or third place. She came in fourth. <laughs> she came in fourth. The only thing that's more shameful than that is Biden came in fifth. <laughs> she beat Biden, the one who's supposed to be the man who's going to run away with this thing. That's the part that's really kind of blowing me away. But a lot of stuff Biden bought on himself on the campaign trail, telling people, well, then, if you're not going to see things my way, go vote for Trump. Being a politician, it can't be your way all the time. You got to compromise sometimes. Some things are worth dying on the sword for, and some things are worth compromising for. Making sure everybody get medical care in America is worth dying on, on falling on the sword for. I don't mind somebody taking taxes out of my check. You're going to take it out anyway. Make sure it's going to schooling instead of the military defense. That's worth dying on the sword for. But she's giving on this. She's giving a comeback speech. A comeback speech. We're only two states in and you're giving a comeback speech where you did not win. You came in fourth freaking place. 
Now, last I heard, they don't give fourth play medals. What is it? Bronze, silver, gold, and what's the fourth place medal? Copper? I don't, I don't know. Uh, chocolate with um, wrapping around it? We have been on quite a journey together, and you've learned this about me. I never give up. But my story is nothing compared to the resilience that I've seen all over this country. The mom in California her lost, who lost her child to gun violence, and even through her grief and heartbreak, she has joined the fight to keep our children safe. The immigrant who works two jobs and still struggles to put food on the table, but is determined to raise her kids in America so that they have a better future. The farmer who's facing bankruptcy because of bad Trump policies, but persists in working the land, just like his parents and his grandparents before him. America deserves a president who doesn't give up or give in just because a decision is hard. America deserves a president who is as resilient as her people. America deserves a president who's going to take on the challenges of our time, climate change and affordable education and college, immigration reform, just... Here she is. Affordable education, affordable health care. No. Every modern country, every prosperous country, Canada... You know, England had single parent health care. That was one of Churchill's first thing that he wanted to enact. They had it since Churchill in England. Health care, single pair. You didn't have to struggle going debt and almost halfway kill yourself because you can't afford the medication and you let that stuff keep stuff eating your body up and you, the medication can help you. Churchill put that in place. Here she is talking about affordable health care. We've been dealing with affordable health care for decades yet at the same time people still not getting health care people still not getting the uh, medical medical care they need people too scared to go to the doctor they're too scared to go to the emergency room to get looked at because they know that bill is coming affordable or not and she's still talking this and this is why you fourth place Amy because most Americans saying we're rich enough now that we can put a tax on Wall Street speculation and pay for people's education. They don't have to come out the people's pocket. You can put a tax on Wall Street speculation or you can tax the wealthy because they already got a tax cut. Just raise it back to Reagan levels. And we can pay for health care for everybody in the country. We can go further than that and make sure people can have a true affordable housing, if not housing. You know, one of the things that I admire about Muammar Gaddafi, who they term a socialist, who they claim was taking the people's money. <laughs> and when you read some of Muammar Gaddafi's green book, the man's mission was to help his whole entire country prosper. He wasn't the only one getting rich. That whole entire country, they was given a dividend every month. In other words, they were getting universal basic income every month. Regardless, whatever. Sick, rich, poor, work or not, they got a universal health care. Gaddafi said, you're not going to take our oil, our oil. You're not going to get me out of this country so you can put somebody in place to take the oil so you can benefit America. I'm going to protect my land. And he took that oil. The same thing with uh, Guaido. I mean, uh, what's his, not Guaido, but what's his name? Uh, uh, in Venezuela I'm going to take our country resources and I'm going to put that money back into our country first if I do business outside my country that money is coming back to the people of this country we're not going to allow America to overthrow our government and put in a leader that will kiss their behind and give them half our profits because that's what we do that's the reason why we go to war you got something we want, and we're going to kill you, throw you out of office, and put 
a puppet leader in place that's going to do business with us because we want that oil. You know, in uh, Libya, everybody got an apartment, nice apartment. Everybody. All you had to do is have a job. You got one. If you wanted to, everybody who got married, they got a piece of land. And all you had to do was farm on that land for one year for the people and the debt would be paid on that land. Because you gave your crops out. It's almost like you used to do in old Israel. The first fruit crops went to the people or went, they say went to the Lord, but it ended up going to the people through the high priest. There was free health care, free education. Matter of fact, uh, where I lived at in the Bronx, one of our tenants was going to school here at Columbia University on Qaddafi's dime. In other words, Qaddafi was paying them to go to school in the United States. Not only did he pay for the education at Columbia University, but he allowed them to come... He gave them a stipend every month to pay for their rent here and to pay for their food here. They, they didn't stay in a dormitory. They had an apartment here in New York. And New York apartments are expensive. Gaddafi was paying for the apartment. Gaddafi was paying for the education. Gaddafi was paying for the food and clothing. As a matter of fact, family members were sending them um, clothing. All they had to do was come back and work for um, the state for one year and all that was paid. And it didn't have to be military. You worked in the Qaddafi government for one year. Those people love Qaddafi. We went around and saw discord in that country like we always do. Like we're doing in um, uh, Iran right now. And you wonder why people hate us. And why people want to harm us. Because we do stuff to them. We go and steal their resources. We bomb up their children and their churches and synagogue. We bomb up their hospitals and schools in the name of terrorism. And those bombs don't even hit not one terrorist. The ratio of the drone strike program is 96% innocent people are getting killed. 96%. I mean, most of the time we're doing a drone strike, we're killing innocent people and the terrorists are not dying. And unfortunately, Barack Obama was the one who instituted that freaking bar, uh, program. Trump took it to another level. Uh, but no, here she is talking about we're going to continue to give you something you already got. And democracy and yes, bringing down the cost of health care. See, bringing down the cost of health care. Here we got a man saying, no, we're going to eliminate the cost of health care. She talking about bringing down the cost of health care, bringing down the cost of education. We're sick and tired of politicians. They said that five years ago, 10 years ago, 20, 30, 40 years ago. FDR tried to uh, promote that during his last term where health care would be, uh, well, he came, you know, he came up with Social Security. He came up with, um, um, on Medicare. He wanted to expand it. The moment he started talking about expanding Medicare, the Republicans said, yo, man, we got to get this brother out of office, man, because if he expand Medicare to everybody, then we ain't going to ever win a, a seat. We ain't going to ever, man, I'm going, we ain't going to ever get a Republican to get in those seats. That's, wh wh that's why we got term limits now. But when FDR was president, we didn't have term limits. They kept electing them over and over again because he was taking care of the needs of the constituent, the people who got in office, got them in office. Could do a little more for the black community, but, you know, it is what it is. But uh, let's keep going. So here she is still talking affordable health care and all that kind of stuff. We beyond that, Amy Klobuchar. And this is why you're not going to win. We're beyond that. People are not going to be putting in office a person that's going to continue to do the same status quo policies. Country cannot take another four years of Donald Trump. And the country cannot take another year 
of centric bullcrap democratic policies that's doing nothing for us e either. So right now we're in the primaries. You got to do whatever you can. The number one, put somebody that can defeat and already defeating Trump by poll numbers. You need to rally around that person. That person who's going to eliminate people's debt. You shouldn't have to pay to go to a public school, period. I don't care if it is a university. Now, if you want to go to Harvard, Yale, something like that, Ivy League, you're trying to be bougie now. Yeah, you come out your pocket. But even then, there should be some program that if a, a, a younger person who come from a particular neighborhood that can't don't have the funds to go to a Harvard, we should be able to help accommodate him. That's when I think student loans are okay. But here in New York, if you're making less than $250,000 a year, you can go to SUNY or CUNY College. You get a free metro card to travel back and forth. Oftentimes, you can get decent meals at low cost. See, these are the programs that are progressing society. She talking about affordable and uh, man, get out of here. Nobody, it, you can, you, to you, it's affordable, but for the average American, it is not affordable. You know, uh, let's say I'm single and my health care premium is $200 a month. To people like Amy Klobuchar, that's affordable. But for a person that barely makes two, three thousand dollars a month, that's not affordable. Let's keep going. The rule, the rule of law can't withstand another four years of a president who thinks that he is above it. Our collective sense of decency can't handle another four years of a president who doesn't care about it. Our democracy can't tolerate another four years of a president who wants to bulldoze right through it. And our American dream cannot tolerate a president that thinks he can choose who lives it. He, the president might as, as, might as well have a sign on his desk that says the buck stops anywhere but here. He literally, he blames everyone. He blames, think about this, for anything that goes wrong. He blames Barack Obama. He blames the city of Baltimore. He blames the head of the Federal Reserve that he appointed. He blames the energy secretary that he nominated. He blames the city of Baltimore. He blames the entire kingdom of Denmark. Who does that? You and, and the Democrats do. One, he blames the prime minister of Canada for cutting him out of the Canadian version of Home Alone 2. That's what this guy does. Look, he had a cameo on that. Why, why would you do that? I mean, not to be petty, but Donald Trump was in Home Alone too. And just because the Canadian, and I don't like Donald Trump, but just because the Canadian president uh, don't like Donald Trump, who gives him the right to edit him out of the Canadian version of Home Alone too? There's rights to that stuff, man. Leave stuff alone, man. Y'all y'all showing y'all pettiness, man. This stuff is what making him stronger. Because you guys are looking so freaking petty. You calling him petty. And he may be petty, Riley. But you petty, tender grass. That is Donald Trump. I think we can do better. Because for the people of this country, when things go wrong, they don't have anyone to blame. They just have to pick themselves up. And I can promise you this, when I am behind that desk, I will take responsibility instead of passing it on. I will reach a You ain't going to be behind that um, desk. Now tell us what you uh what what are you planning on pushing? Cross the aisle and work with Americans in good faith instead of picking fights. I will bring this country together instead of tearing it apart. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I can't take no more. She says she'll bring this country together instead of tearing it apart. <laughs> You're sitting up here trying to tell us that it's impossible to push Medicare for all. That it's impossible to offer tuition-free education. 
You're sitting here saying that it's impossible to fight for the urgent needs that will benefit this country. But you're going to bring the country together. You know how you're going to bring the country together? Because the country is going to come together to fight against people like you. I'm sorry this kind of took long. I wanted us to analyze this hilarious event. This is Amy Klobuchar doing a victory type speech when she came in fourth place. And her vow to march on. And believe me, she'll march on. She need to march on out this race and go sit her butt down. I'm Rob Brown with the Rob Report. Look, look, I'm done with this. Look, remember, like, subscribe, share, hit the notification button. Make sure you're still subscribed because the 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 Google the Google ghouls don't like me. Um, they have probably already demonetized this video uh, before I even upload it because that's what they do. So again, um, um, you can always contribute to my PayPal account, PayPal.me. Uh, forward slash Bob TV NYC all caps any amount would do but for my renegade for my, 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 my remnant for my diehards for my buffalo soldiers those people who are going to be part of the Bob TV brigade um, we're pushing 25 occasionally you're the people I'm going to talk to everybody else can donate any amount available I gladly receive it it's you who I talk to about the bigger picture the bigger things that we're doing so those who are part of this brigade already, I say thank you. Those who are think on the fence thinking about uh, helping us in this first phase, I'm encouraging you to get off the fence and help us because it's you that's going to help us do the upgrading and are going to the next level when it comes to the Bob TV channel. Uh, and I got various shows that I'm doing, and, but I'm going to do some interviews. I want to get a call in line. I want to do interviews. I want to do interviews out on the field. I want to do interviews at YouTube Studio. I want to do interviews here via Skype. And um, it's just a lot of things I want to do, but I have to have the adequate equipment to do it. I'm not asking for something brand new in this first phase, um, just to take care of some things here where we host the show. And upgrade um, uh, my desktop to get a faster chipset so it can handle the 4K camera that um, I have available. Let me get off this. Give me a moment. Yeah, so um, what I would like for you to do is um, 25 by 25. The initial program was... I was going to stay up and do uh, for 25 hours, putting out content in, ex in hopes to get 25 people to donate $25 uh, within this time frame. And actually, I mean, much as I love doing this, it's exhausting. I, I'm not even going into post editing. I'm not going to try to do the quality. I'm just shooting the video straight and putting it up online because my computer, my laptop cannot handle me going live on YouTube right now it's an older laptop okay and even now I'm pre-recording this thing and I'm uploading it in Premiere and you can see it's kind of choppy and um, and in this phase there's certain things I need to take care of um, and so there's gonna be some things I need to take care of for the facility that I'm doing this in and then the upgrade of the desktop um, that's in the shop right now um, and um, then I want to upgrade another computer, but that's in the second phase. The second phase. Right now, I just um, want to um, be able to um, take care of some things here in studio. I mean, we got we got decent lights here. I need a light over here that's powered by uh, electrical power, not battery power, because all the time I'm doing the show and the light battery light go out. And then it get real dark sometimes. So there's certain things that um, I need that I normally would take care of myself. I normally just go ahead and do it on my own. 
But I was told that when you you feel that you have a great endeavor that you're doing, you got to invite people in to help you participate in that. Don't go at it alone. Nobody goes on a journey to fight a great war by themselves. That would be an idiot. You need an army. And um, so <clears throat> with the Bob TV Network, um, we're looking for 25 people to donate $25. We're trying to get it. We're trying to reach that goal before 12 o'clock tonight. Uh, so I'm going to be up here putting some more content on. I'm going to take a break, get some water, fix me a peanut butter jelly sandwich, uh, and um, probably go for a walk around the block to get fresh air. Now I'm coming right back here and do a couple of more segments. Uh, and um, for those who given so far, I really appreciate you. It's going to do exactly what it's going to do. It's going to go take care of some of the needs here. Um, I really appreciate you. And I, I don't take that lightly. I come from a, um, a religious family that I be that believes that when you give, it will be given unto you. Good measures pressed down, shaken together, running over. Now, I'm not trying to preach to you, nothing like that. But I believe in that principle. And I, I'm an I'm a avid giver. I, I love to give. You know. Um, and if I got it, I love it even more. <laughs> um, but when I, get, when I don't have it, I'm upset. I'm hurt. It hurt my heart when I can't be a blessing to somebody. And when I get an opportunity to bless somebody and I can't, man, it really, ah, it eats me up, man. It eats me up, man. You know, my, my dream is to be the bear man where I have so much freaking money that I'm looking for people to bless. So if I see that lady at the grocery store and she's struggling with the kids and she got a food stamp, baby, keep your food stamp. Bam. That's the kind of person I want. You know, ah, oh, man, I'm trying to get a new car. I'm short money. You know, and I want, bam, I got it. Bam. That's what I do. I, I'm not at that stage yet, but I'm praying that I get to that stage. So I take your donations very seriously. Uh, and I do pray for expansion, growth for you. I pray for that money to come back and return. Uh, you know, I know some of you people don't believe, don't, don't believe like I do. Hey, to each his own. I'm just letting you know, I expect great things to happen to you every time you donate to this channel. So, um, keep at it. I'll be right back. I got to relax a little bit. My throat is, uh, going out. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about, uh, Joe Biden a little bit because his campaign is going down. Uh, Joe Biden tried to tout himself as a person who fought racial equality. And he's gone on numerous speeches talking about how much he's done it. But when you look on actual record, he very rarely have done it. And a lot of his speeches that he's done on racial equality, he's taken from other people. Sean King did a good, um, go check out um, his Twitter. He did a good report on that. I don't think I'm going to do any better. Um, just like Benjamin Dixon did a good report on um, Mayor Bloomberg and his racist policies. You know, I don't think I could have did any better because dude got audio and video of Bloomberg being flat out racist. Uh, but look, uh, appreciate you guys. Uh, talk to you on the next one. Peace.